Uh, market performance, what did you make of it? James, a fantastic session for the Aussie share market. We started off relatively flat, but we gained all throughout the day, and we saw a gain of three quarters of a percent, but on light volumes, $3.4 billion worth of stock being traded. Starting off with some of the positives today, and we saw a number of companies reaching 52-week highs, and I guess the key ones are News Corporation, Westfield Retail Trust, as well as Domino's. Now, News Corporation, of course, rising to a four-year high on the back of speculation that it could be looking at splitting out its business but we've also seen stocks like Westfield Retail Trust doing extremely well from the uh, risk off environment that we've seen in the last few months if we have a look at that property space it's a high yielding area there's positive sensitivity to the falling interest rate environment that we are seeing domestically and we're also seeing balance sheets in a lot stronger uh, in a lot stronger shape so back to the traditional property trust models so our property trusts have been doing very well and Westfield Retail Retail trust, trust is one that's been gaining over the last few months. And we know that consumers aren't spending much at the stores, but they do seem to be spending money on takeaway food and services. And Domino's has been a, a beneficiary of that. So Domino's also seeing a 52-week high. There was also some evidence that we saw investors and traders closing out some of their short positions on the market. And that's ahead of the event risk of the EU summit on Thursday and Friday. Of course, we know that uh, JB Hi-Fi is the most shorted stock uh, on the Australian market with around about 22% of its stock shorted. But today, doing very well. That stock up by 5.7%. So it does look like uh, some shuffling of positions ahead of that EU summit. But altogether, a great performance by the Australian share market, but on quite low volumes. David, one of the, the major focuses, well, for seems like forever these days, we're coming ever closer to the end of the financial year. Any sort of uh, idea as to how we are tracking at the moment? We are tracking for a loss of around about 12%. And if we have a look at uh, the sectors which have done well, once again, it have been, has been the defensives. The telecom sectors up by about 23%. On the flip side, we've seen the big miners having a terrible 52 weeks. If we have a look at the material space, they're actually down by around about 30% for the full year. And I guess if we just have a look at the last quarter, we've seen a number of downgrades from those cyclical areas coming through. We know that retail is doing it tough. We know that property is doing it tough construction here domestically as well as the media space so those cyclical areas under a fair bit of pressure we have seen though interest rates starting to come down uh, from last November so hopefully that will start to kick in but it's been a quarter where we have seen a lot of cost cutting and some of the fat uh, disappearing as well as restructures but really what these areas need at the moment is a turn in the cycle and they need to see an improvement in economic conditions because we know outside of the uh, the commodity space a lot of sectors of the Australian uh, economy are struggling and that's been seen through some of the profit downgrades that we've seen over the last six months I think about 35 out of the top 100 companies have come out with profit downgrades and if you have a look at the type of companies which are really downgrading their earnings it is those companies which are quite cyclical in nature seems uh, we, a day can't go by without talking about the media space in one shape or form Julia once again uh, News Corp particularly overnight uh, a big big uh, session for them it seems they have confirmed at least that they are tossing up the idea of splitting their operations. The market really likes the sounds of this. We saw its New York ADRs uh, up by 8.3% uh, and we saw the domestically listed stock up by ar around about 3.4% trading at a four-year high now. So it looks like News Corporation, the market speculating that we could see a division into the entertainment uh, versus the publishing assets and it's almost like the good versus the bad assets. The good assets would be the entertainment assets which have been responsible for driving a lot of the growth that has come in News Corporation's earnings while the the publishing assets, well, these are the assets which need to adjust to the new media world or the digital platform. So uh, I guess the market's speculating that we could see some value being unlocked and really liking the sounds of it. But if we have a look at News Corp and where its revenue, at where its profits come from, more than 75% of its operating profit comes from its cable divisions as well as its films, so from the entertainment part. And the publishing part is actually quite a small portion of its revenue as well as operating profit. So I guess in terms of this split, the majority of its assets or the attractive good assets would be going into the entertainment part and then the leftover would be in a publishing uh, part. So putting a bit of a ring around those bad assets. So altogether, really good news for News Corporation shareholders up by uh, around, around about 4% and at a four year high. Uh, uh, downgrade their shares at the end down about one9 uh, percent. Uh, look, I know everybody knows it's a difficult uh, sector at the moment, that construction and building materials, but um, that's a lot of downgrades. 
We saw a downgrade back in April and to see another one here in June is quite disappointing but really shows that it is quite difficult in that construction space and really what Boral needs is a rebound in the domestic construction space to help its business out. They did see rainy weather in June and that, that certainly didn't help but we are seeing quite weak residential sales and that's weighing on Boral as well. But I think today uh, the, the market reaction wasn't too bad. At one stage we saw the shares down by more than 5% but in the end only down by 1.9%. And I guess as long as the weakness in the construction market here domestically stays, we're going to see more and more speculation that Boral is getting to the point that um, it may need a capital raising to really shore up its balance sheet and that it may be getting closer to some of those banking covenants. So if we do see a, a prolonged um, period where we are at this bottom of the cycle for the construction market in Australia, well, speculation is just going to continue to grow that we'll see a capital raising from Boral.